In this video, we are going to talk about gluconeogenesis. So what is gluconeogenesis? If we break the word, gluco means glucose, neo means new, and genesis means generation. That is, generation of glucose from new sources. So the basic source of glucose is carbohydrate or carbohydrate-rich food, such as bread, rice, noodles, which are carbohydrate-rich food. So, carbohydrate is the main source for glucose in our body. But our body can also produce glucose from amino acids, glycerols, and other sources like lactate and pyruvate. So, when we produce glucose from the other sources other than the carbohydrate, then it is called gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis pathway is very much similar to the reverse pathway of glycolysis. Glycolysis is the pathway to break down glucose and gluconeogenesis is formation of glucose in the reverse way. But there are some enzymes which are different in case of gluconeogenesis than glycolysis. In glycolysis pathway, there are some steps which are reversible and some steps which are irreversible. There are three irreversible steps in glycolysis. The first one is formation of glucose 6-phosphate from glucose. Here we use hexokinase enzyme and this process cannot be reversed by the same enzyme. The next step that is glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate, this is a reversible process. We can use the same isomerase enzyme to reverse this step. The next step that is fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, this is the second irreversible step of glycolysis. After this, the fructose 1,6-bisphosphate splits into two molecules and this step is also reversible. And after this, after several reversible steps, comes the third irreversible step of glycolysis that is formation of pyruvate from phosphoenol pyruvate and the enzyme is pyruvate kinase and we cannot use the same enzyme to reverse the step from pyruvate. After formation of pyruvate, the pyruvate enters the mitochondria. Inside the mitochondria, pyruvate can either produce acetyl-CoA using the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase or it can also produce oxaloacetate using another enzyme called pyruvate carboxylase. Which enzyme will be activated depends on the concentration of acetyl-CoA inside mitochondria. Acetyl-CoA and oxaloacetate reacts with each other and enters the Krebs cycle. If glucose level is low in the blood, then we have to make glucose from pyruvate. But pyruvate cannot be converted to glucose directly. So pyruvate has to be converted to oxaloacetate first by the enzyme pyruvate carboxylase. Oxaloacetate itself cannot leave the mitochondria. So it first gets converted to malate and the malate leaves the mitochondria. After leaving the mitochondria in the cytosol, malate again gets converted to oxaloacetate. And then this oxaloacetate will be converted to phosphoenol pyruvate by the enzyme phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase. Now it has entered in the glycolysis reverse pathway. This phosphoenol pyruvate can now go reverse in the glycolysis pathway using the same enzymes as these processes are reversible process. Now it gets stuck in the fructose 1,6-base phosphate as from fructose 1,6-base phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate is not a reversible process. So in here we need another enzyme called fructose 1,6-base phosphatase. From fructose 6-phosphate to glucose 6-phosphate is a reversible reaction so we can use the same isomerase enzyme, but the next reaction we need another enzyme that is glucose 6-phosphatase. This is how pyruvate can be converted to glucose in gluconeogenesis. Now if we want to convert lactate to glucose, then at first we have to convert lactate to pyruvate. 
and then pyruvate can be converted to glucose. Now, if we want to make glucose from amino acids, then it can enter in the gluconeogenesis pathway in three ways. Some amino acids can be converted to pyruvate, some can be converted to acetyl-CoA, or some amino acids can enter the gluconeogenesis pathway in the Krebs cycle intermediates. Acetyl-CoA and Krebs cycle intermediates can be converted to oxaloacetate and then it can enter in the gluconeogenesis pathway. Now, fat can also be converted into glucose. Fat contains glycerol and fatty acid molecules. The glycerol can be converted to glycerol 3-phosphate by using an enzyme glycerol kinase. Now, the glycerol 3-phosphate can be converted to dihydroxyacetone phosphate by using glycerol 3-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme. And this is how glycerol can enter in the gluconeogenesis pathway by converting into dihydroxyacetone phosphate, which is a part of the glycolysis or reverse glycolysis pathway. Now, to recap the gluconeogenesis pathway from pyruvate, I have drawn the glycolysis pathway first. Now, starting from the pyruvate, we will go towards the glucose. But pyruvate cannot be converted to phosphoenol pyruvate. So, pyruvate goes inside the mitochondria and gets converted to oxaloacetate using the enzyme pyruvate carboxylase. Now, oxaloacetate gets converted to malate and malate comes out of the mitochondria and then again converted to oxaloacetate. And that oxaloacetate will be converted to phosphoenol pyruvate by phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase. Now, for all the reversible reactions, we use the same enzymes as glycolysis. The change in enzyme will occur in the fructose 1,6-bisphosphate to fructose 6-phosphate conversion. Here, we use fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase in gluconeogenesis. And the second change of enzyme will occur in the glucose 6-phosphate to conversion of glucose. That is, we cannot use the hexokinase. It cannot reverse the reaction. So, we have to use glucose 6-phosphatase in case of gluconeogenesis. So, there are only four different enzymes from glycolysis which are used to convert pyruvate to glucose in gluconeogenesis. So the gluconeogenesis video ends here and you can find the full page photographs in the Facebook and Instagram pages. Thank you.